Hello, in this video, we will be covering 13.6, which is, um, I believe, the directional derivatives, but yes, directional derivatives and gradients. So we'll go ahead and start again, just as a reminder, every single time. <laughs> um, make sure that you're reading the slides, right, with all the information and the content. It includes all the theorems and the properties and the rules that we'll be using. Um, as we go through this assignment. I'll try to bring up a couple of those formulas as we go through, just to kind of um, reiterate it. But for the most part, I will be using all of the information that was given inside of those. Uh, well, not all of it, but <laughs> we will be using that information. So let's see, number one. Oh, man. So number one has the function x cubed minus y cubed, it has a 0.63, and it has a vector, and I'm just going to write this in component form because that's my preference. It's square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2 for both the i and the j components. Um, now, as far as the definition of the directional derivative, this is how this is one of the ways it was defined, and this is my most favorite. So this is the one I'm going to use to calculate um, the directional uh, derivative, okay? So not only is it a derivative, but it's in a specific direction, okay? Now, um, fx is the partial derivative with respect to x. So for the first term, it would be 3x squared. For the second term, it would be just 0. For the partial derivative with respect to y, that would be 0 minus 3y squared. And then v itself in component form is this. And again, you're more than welcome to use the ijk notation. I just don't prefer that, OK? So that is just my choice. Um, but if you do use the ijk notation, it's perfectly fine. Um, I know that a lot of textbooks like to use the ijk format. For me, I don't know why, but my brain just works better when I have it in component form, okay? So that's just me personally. That's why I do include both. You get to see it in the IJK format for the most part in these slides, but then when I come over here to do the examples, I like to do it in component form, and you have like sort of examples of both, so you can det determine which one you like, okay? Um, so then when I'm, I'm actually going to simplify this first, but it is not that complicated. Um, in order for me to find the dot product, I am going to have to follow those steps for the dot product. Um, the biggest misconception I get is that people will do the dot product and then give me a vector as the answer. And the, by the definition of a dot product, you should not have a vector when you do the dot product. When you do the dot product, you're going to end up with the scalar expression, OK? Um, so the, the way we compute it is to take the first components and multiply them together. So 3x squared times 2. And I don't mean a dot. I shouldn't use dot because we're talking about vectors. You've got to be very careful. So I'm just going to use parentheses to signify that multiplication. Then it's a plus sign. And then you have the second component multiplied the other second component. And so then what I get here is 3 square root of 2x squared over 2 minus, because of the double signs, 3 square root of 2y squared over 2. And unfortunately, I cannot um, combine that. They're not like terms. So this is the answer. As weird and as ugly as it looks, it just is the answer, OK? Um, oh, but I'm not done yet, because if I'm going to do this at the specific point, then I do need to plug in those point values, okay? And my point was 6, 3, which means this is my x-coordinate and this is my y-coordinate. So this will become 3 square root of 2, 6 squared over 2, and then 3 square root of 2, 3 squared over 2. So this becomes 36, um, let's see, 36 times 3, 
is 108 square root of 2 over 2. And here we have 9 times 3, which is 27 square root of 2 over 2. And since they both have the square root of 2 over 2, we can combine them. Okay, so 108 minus 27 is actually 81 square root of 2 over 2. Um, and it doesn't look like they're asking me to round my answer to anything. So then I will have to enter in this exact um, answer. So 81 the square root of 2 over 2. Oops, why did I put 0? So this is actually the final response there. Um, and we take it a check. So yay. Now, number two, we're going to move on. And I'm going to go see briefly how many questions there are in here. There are 10. Okay, so that's not too many. Um, they can get algebraically intensive eventually, um, but we're just going to keep going and see how bad they get for us, right? Particularly in this um, homework section. So this time it gives me the function, the square root of x squared plus y squared. My point is five comma 12. And my vector, again, I'm gonna write it in component form, is five negative 12, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing as before. And I'm going to, um, oh, there's an issue here. When you do in the direction of B, V does need to be a unit vector, okay? Um, it should not have any length whatsoever. But if I find the magnitude of B, you'll notice that it's not a unit vector. I didn't mention that up here because it was, um, but it would have been important to verify that, that it was. So if I would have done the magnitude of B, I would have gotten the square root of square root of two squared, or square root of two over two squared, plus square root of two over two squared, which would have given me two over four plus two over four, which is the square root of one, which is one, okay? And so then in that case, V was a unit vector. And so I use that specific V, okay? Um, it does need to be a unit vector. I think in the lecture, they define DV as fx, fy, and then it's dot product with u because this guy does need to be a unit vector. I just got lucky in the fact that that in number one, it was a unit vector, okay? But in number two, I recognize that it is not a unit vector, okay? So if I take the magnitude here, I get um, five squared plus negative 12 squared which is actually the square root of um, 25 plus 144, which is the square root of 169, which is a nice number, it's 13, okay? Which means that my unit vector u is going to be um, v over this 13. So I'm gonna get 5 over 13 and negative 12 over 13. And so now I can go ahead and find that directional um, derivative. So I'm going to find the partial derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y, and then I can do the dot product with this unit vector. So in this case, um, oh gosh, these derivatives are going to be pretty complicated. So let's bear with me, okay? So I am going to write this as x squared plus y squared to the one half. So that when I go to find the derivative with respect to x, I can just bring down my power, keep the base, decrease the power by one, and then multiply by the derivative of what's inside. I'm doing the derivative with respect to x, so this becomes 2x plus 0. Then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to take the derivative with respect to y. So I bring down the power, rewrite the base, decrease the power by 1, and then apply the chain rule. And the derivative of the first term is 0 with respect to y, and then 2y with respect to y. 
And then I'm going to dot product this with my unit vector 5 over 13, comma, negative 12 over 13. I'm running out of room there, so I was just trying to squish it in there. OK, so let's see. This will actually look like the 2 and the 2 will cancel. So I'll just end up with x over negative means it's downstairs, and 1 half means it's the square root. Same thing here. This 2 is going to cancel with that 2. And so you end up with y over the square root of x squared plus y squared. That doesn't need to get dot product with 5 over 13 comma negative 12 over 13. I hope I have enough room. So then if I dot product this, I'm going to get um, 5x over 13 square root of x squared plus y squared plus Actually, that's going to be a negative. So plus a negative, we'll change it to a minus 12y over 13 square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, they do have the same common denominator, so I can write it like this. But I do still need to plug in the coordinates that they gave me. So in this case, they gave me 5, which is my x, and 12, which is my y. So if I plug that in there, we get 5 times 5 is 25, minus 12 times 12 is 144, over 13, and then the square root of 5 squared, which is 25, plus y squared, which is 12 squared, which is 144, we get 25 minus 144 is negative 119. And at the bottom, we get 13 times 13, because we've already done this computation before, right? We have done 25 plus 144. We got 169. And the square root of that was 113. So this is, unless 119 can be divided by 13, it cannot. So then we just get 119 over 169. And this is the final answer that they want there. I don't know why, but I'm nervous about this one. I'm thinking I went, that went too fast. <laughs> I might have made an error, but we'll see. No, I didn't. Yay. <laughs> OK. Um, let's try number three now. So for number three, it's different. Number three, they want the gradient, OK? So they give us our function 19x e to the y over x and our point 20 comma 0. And so they're asking us for the gradient. OK, this is different. So the gradient is, um, is actually that part that we did in the directional derivative. It's just the derivative with respect to x and then the derivative with respect to y, but as components of a vector. OK. And so when you write this, if you're writing this on paper in the book, they just bold, right, the, the gradient symbol. But it's really like a gradient vector. So you do need to put that vector notation, just like I do on V and U when I'm talking about a vector. On paper, I need to put signify that that is a vector, OK? Um, and then it does tell me to evaluate it at this point. So once we find those partial derivatives, we do have to plug in this for x and 0 for y, OK? So let's go ahead and take a stab at it. Um, the derivative with respect to x. So notice that you have one factor in terms of x and another factor in terms of x. So unfortunately, I am going to have to do the product rule for this first component, OK? Which means my comma is probably going to be like way over here somewhere. Anyway, we're going to have the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. The chain rule says that. Um, y is the constant, and the derivative of 1 over x, don't know how many of you remember that, but the derivative of 1 over x is the ln of x. Not very many people remember that, OK? So be very, very careful there. 
now um oh i skipped number three i'm saying number four for some reason so let me leave let me just write number four and we'll go back to number three real quick because this is pretty complicated okay and i'll walk through that in a minute now um number three was a different problem says 5x plus 4y squared plus 1, and it has the point 3, 4. And they are asking me for the gradient function at the different point. So if I'm going to do the gradient of f, that's going to be fx comma fy. And so then in this case, the derivative of this is 5 plus 0 plus 0. And with respect to y, it's 0 plus 8y plus 0 or just five comma eight y. And then if I plug in the point, there's no x's to plug in, but I do need to plug in four for y. So I end up with five comma eight times four, which is five comma 32. And so let's go try that. We need our vector set and five comma 32. Oops, I put the wrong number. Okay, so that one was marked correct, but now we're going to go apply it to the more complicated looking one, right? So we started with our product rule, the first term, right, times the derivative of the second term plus the second term or factor times the derivative of the first factor, which would just be 19. Now I'm going to put my comma and now I'm going to work on gy. Now in GY, this is just like a constant multiplier. So you have 19 X, and then you gotta take the derivative of this with respect to Y. And when you take the derivative of this with respect to Y for the chain rule, one over X is like the constant multiplier and the derivative of Y is just one. So then if I clean this up, this is 19 X Y ln of X, times e to the y over x plus 19 e to the y over x comma, this x and this x will reduce and I'll just get 19 e to the y over x. And they do want me to evaluate it at that point. So I'm going to plug in um, 20 for x and zero for y. And so then here zero times anything is just gonna be a big fat zero. And then I have plus 19e to the zero comma 19e to the zero. And we know anything to the power zero is one. So really this is just 19 times one, which is 19 and 19 times one, which is 19. And so let's see what we get there sets. Vec oh, not sets, vectors. And then this, uh, what did I get? 19 comma 19. Okay, so far so good. We're almost halfway through. Now number five. Number five says h of x, y equals e to the negative 7y sine of y. And then the point is 1 comma pi over 2. And v is equal to negative i, which is negative 1 comma 0. Now, when I take the magnitude of v, I get the square root of negative 1 squared, which is 1, plus 0 squared, which is 0, which is 1. So this is a unit vector. Um, so I can go ahead and use the gradient to find the directional derivative. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the steps that I did before, but then all I have to do is remember to dot product this unit vector. Okay. So I'm going to do the steps just like I did before, find the gradient of H, which is H X comma H Y. 
Um, there is no X's in this function. Oh, yes, there is. I just accidentally did not type it in there. It said e to the negative 7x and then sine of y. So what that means is that this guy is going to act like my constant multiplier. And the derivative of e to the 7x is e to the negative 7x. And we do our chain rule. So I just get negative 7, comma. Now I'm going to take the derivative with respect to y. So e to the negative 7x acts like my um, constant multiplier. And the derivative of sine y is cosine of y. And so then if I clean that up, it's going to be negative 7e to the negative 7x sine of y, comma, e to the negative 7x cosine of y. And then what I want to do is I want to plug in that point, right? So if I want to find the gradient of h at this point, I'm going to plug everybody in. So 7e to the negative 7 times 1. Oh, I need to write that better. And then sine of pi over 2, e to the negative 7 times 1, cosine of pi over 2. Let's see. What is sine of pi over 2? The y value would be 1, I think. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this is 1. Cosine of pi over 2, I believe, is 0. But let me verify my calculator. Yes. So I get negative 7 e to the negative 7 times 1. And over here, I get e to the negative 7 um, times 0. So what does that give me? That gives me negative 7 e to the negative 7 comma 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to um, find the directional derivative into h. And so to do that, we're going to take this vector that we just found, and we're going to dot product um, our v vector because it is a unit vector. And so a negative and a negative, we get positive 7 e to the negative 7. And then plus 0 times 0 is just 0. So we get 7e to the negative 7. And let's try that in there. 7e to the negative 7. OK, so far so good. Now let's go ahead and try number 6. So for number six, we have the function, we have three variables now. It doesn't really change much. The process is still the same. I just have another variable to consider. Um, so P is three, 12, zero. And my second point is zero, zero, zero. So it does tell me to find it in the direction of PQ but it didn't actually give me the derivative for PQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and calculate that now. Um, so if it's PQ, that means the Q minus the P coordinate, Q minus the P coordinate, Q minus the P coordinate. We get negative three, negative 12 and zero. And I don't believe that that is a unit vector. So we may need to make it one. Let's go see. So this squared is nine. 12 squared is 144, and 0 squared is 0. So I get the square root of 153. I believe I get the square root of 153. Let's see, 9 plus 144. Yes. Um, and that's not going to simplify, so I'm just going to leave it like as um, the square root of 153. OK. Now, if I want to have the unit vector, that means I need to take this vector and divide it by this. So my coordinates are gonna, my components are gonna be as such. And then zero divided by anything is still zero, right? Okay, 
Now let's go find those gradients. This might be a little bit more complicated, but let's try. So the gradient of G is going to be GX comma GY comma GZ. And I did not say GZ, I said GZ. I'm not heavily into rap, but my child is, and so I know a tiny bit about things that I never would have thought I would know about. I'm a rock person, and my child is a rap person, and the other person is a pop person. Luckily, my little boy is into rock like me, so that's nice. Um, anyway, I'm getting away from myself. So the derivative with respect to x, we've got this guy here. All of this junk is just going to act like a constant multiplier. So it's going to be y e to the 2z. And then the derivative of x is just 1, right? Again, I got to stop using the dots when we have vectors involved because it, you might get it confused with the dot product, right? Which is something completely different. So now let's do the derivative with respect to y. So these guys are going to be like my constant multipliers. And then the derivative of y is just 1. And then now when I do the derivative with respect to z, these are my constant multipliers. And the derivative of that is e to the 2z. And then apply the chain rule. The derivative of that is just 2. So then what do I get here completely? I get y e to the 2z x e to the 2z and then I get x oh no 2xy e to the 2z okay now I still need to evaluate this at the point so it says use the gradient to find the directional derivative of the function at p so then p is the numbers that I should be plugging in so I'm going to plug in 3 for x y uh, 12 for y and 0 for z and so then we get the gradient of G at P is going to be 12 E to the two times zero is zero. Um, three E again, the two times zero is zero. And then two times three times 12 E to the two times zero is zero. So these are all a bunch of ones, which means they're not gonna change anything. We get 12, three, and then whatever this is. I think it's 72, but let me go make sure. Two times three times 12, yes, 72. And so then this is the directional um, derivative. I get 12 comma three comma 72. Oh no, it says it cannot be graded. Oh, it's because I'm a dork. I did not enter the directional derivative, right? What I entered was the gradient at point P, right? I have not done the directional derivative at point P. So in order for me to do the directional derivative of G, I have to take the, the gradient and then I have to dot product it with my unit vector. So negative three over the square root of 153, negative 12 over the square root of 153 and zero. So when I multiply these guys, I get negative 36 over the square root of 153. Plus when I multiply the middle components, I get negative 36 over the square root of 153. And then those, when I multiply them, I will get zero. These do have the same denominator. So negative 36 plus negative 36 is negative 72 over the square root of 153. And so then this is the directional derivative evaluated at point P. And so it says the answer cannot be understood because I wasn't supposed to type in a vector, right? I was supposed to type in a scalar, okay? And so that's one of the indicators that you know, like your answer is not the kind of answer it should be, okay? It's not that the numbers are wrong, it's just it's not even the right kind of solution. Um, it's not supposed to be a vector, it's supposed to be a scalar or vice versa. Um, so no vectors, I do not need vectors. I need operations and I need a fraction. 
negative 72 over square root of 153. Oh, now I'm nervous because it already got an X. Okay, yay, we got a green check. Awesome, now let's go on to number seven. So we're gonna do number seven and number seven says, the fun, find the gradient of the function at the point. Okay, it's not too, too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and try that. We have f of x, y equal to x squared plus 2xy. And then our point is just 4 comma 0. So if I want to find the gradient of f, that is fx, fy, which in this case is 2x plus 2y comma um, 0 plus 2x. And then if I want to find the gradient at this particular point, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in um, 4 for x and 0 for y. So 2 times 4 plus 2 times 0, and then 2 times 4. So I get 8 comma 8. Okay, so I do know this part and it is a vector. Okay, and then now if I want to find the maximum value, I have to recall that the maximum value is actually going to be the, uh, the magnitude of f of the gradient, okay? So the magnitude of the gradient. So then in this case, if this is the gradient I got, it would be 64 plus 64, which is the square root of 128, which is eight square root of two. I believe it is eight square root of two. I might have done too much in my head there. Okay, yes, it is correct. So I'm gonna type eight square root of two. And we got the two green checks. So yay, now we'll move on to number eight. Ew, number eight has variables on the bottom. So it might require me to do product rule or quotient rule. So I am not going to, um, I am not gonna do this just yet. I'm going to actually go back to the problem and see what we can do there. Any more paper. I'm not, I cannot fit this problem on that little tiny piece of paper that was left. So let's see, f of x, y equals x plus 7y over y plus 1, and then my point is 6 comma 1. So once the gradient directed and then the maximum value. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the gradient of f. That's just going to be fx comma fy. Now, there's no x's down here. So it's like one over y plus one acts like our constant multiplier. And then the derivative of x is one and the derivative of seven y is zero, okay? Now for fy though, there is pieces on the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna have to do the quotient rule. So low d high, minus high d low over low squared. And so if I clean this up a little bit, I get one over y plus one comma, um, seven times y plus one minus uh, one times x plus seven y, all over y plus one squared. I think I can simplify that just a little bit more. So I get 7y plus 7 minus x minus 7y over y plus 1 squared. The 7y's will cancel. And so I'll end up with 1 over y plus 1 comma 7 minus x over y plus 1 squared. Okay. Um, so we do want to plug in our point. So six comma one. 
and I get one over one plus one, seven minus six over one plus one squared. So I get one over two comma one over two squared, which gives me one over two comma one over four. Now, let me go type that in there. Okay, and then now it says find the maximum. So we're just gonna do the magnitude of the gradient of F, which is the square root of this guy squared, which is one fourth, plus this guy squared, which is one sixteenth. And if I combine those, I believe I get five over 16, but I'm not sure. Let me see. One over four plus one over 16 is five over 16. Now the square root of five I cannot do, but the square root of 16 I can, it's just four. And so I get a fraction and I get a square root at the top, but a four at the bottom. Okay, moving on to our last two problems. So number nine gives me the function and it says find a unit vector u that is orthogonal to the magnitude at seven one. Okay, this is interesting. We haven't done one like this, okay? So we've been calculating um, the du, but we've always been given the vector. And here they're not giving us the vector, they're asking us information about that vector, okay? So I don't know what u is. I'm just gonna say it is uh, u1 and u2, right? Whatever those components are. But what I do know is that in order for it to be orthogonal, um, that this dot product must equal zero, okay? So if I can figure out what this is, whatever those components are, I might create a, um, this will create an equation to solve. So I'll have this component times this component plus the other component times this component, and that should equal zero. And hopefully I can solve that equation for the variables, whatever those variables may be, okay? Um, you can also make one up just so long as it is um, orthogonal, okay? As long as you can get zero. You could create whatever you want to create, okay? There's no specific um, vector here, okay? Um, the only thing I need to know, actually there is, because it also needs to be a unit vector, right? So we also know that the magnitude of u has to equal one. So what does that mean? That means that the square root of u1 squared plus u2 squared has to equal one. Or moreover, that u1 squared plus u2 squared has to equal one. If you square both sides of the other, of this equation, the house would go away and one squared is just one, okay? And so you have this system of equations here. Here's equation one and here's equation two, okay? And once you have that system of equations, you should be able to solve for u1 and u2, okay? But to help us, we need to figure out what these coefficients are, okay? So let's go ahead and find that gradient. So in this case, the gradient is going to be zero minus one third um, minus zero, and then zero, zero, and negative one fifth. 
And if I plug in a point, it really doesn't matter what point I plug in, even though they're telling me to plug in seven one, there's no X's or Y's to plug that into. So this is the values that you're gonna get, okay? Which means that my equation one is going to look like um, negative one third U1 plus, or actually minus one third U2. Not one third, one fifth. And that should equal zero. And then my second equation is that u1 squared plus u2 squared equals one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one because it doesn't have squares on it. And I'm going to use substitution method to find this, okay? So according to the substitution method, I'm gonna multiply everybody by a common denominator, 15. When I do that, This will reduce and I will get negative five E1. These will reduce and I will get negative three U2 equal to zero because 15 times zero is still zero. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this over. So I get negative five U1 equals a positive U2 and then I'm gonna divide by the negative five. So I get that U1 equals negative three fifths U2. Then I'm going to substitute that here. So u, not u1, but instead of u1, it's going to be negative 3 fifths u2. So then I get 9 over 25 u2 squared plus u2 squared equals 1. Well, if I combine my U2 squareds, what's nine over 25 plus one? I get 34 over 25 U2 squared equal to one. Now I know how to get rid of that fraction. I'm just gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So I get U2 squared equals 25 over 34. And then if I take the square root here, I will get that u equals, could be plus or minus. Um, the square root of 25 is five, but the square root of 34 is gonna stay the square root of 34. Okay. So then what does that mean? Oh, that's U2. U2, U2. We still need to go calculate what U1 is. So if U2 is positive five over square root of 34, then U1 would be negative three over five times that. which would equal negative three over the five, no, just over square root of 34, because the fives would cancel. Or if u2 equaled negative five over square root of 34, then u1 would be negative three fifths times negative five over square root of 34, which would have given me a positive three over square root of 34. Okay, so then let's see, we have a choice then because we apparently have two vectors that are both unit vectors and both fit the description of being orthogonal to F and at the same time, a unit vector, okay? So we've got two different vectors. Here's u1 as a vector, the first unit vector would be um, negative three over square root of 34, comma, positive five over square root of 34. The second choice, and these are not the same thing as the components, okay? This is just my first u and my second u as a vector. And in this case, u1 would be positive 
3 over square root of 4 and then a negative 5 over the square root of 34. I do have a choice here, okay? So um, we could choose one and then we're just going to work with that, okay? So I'm actually going to choose U2, no particular reason, I'm just going to, okay? And so let's go ahead and see what we get here. It really doesn't matter because one is going in one direction and the other is going in the opposite direction, right? But if you're orthogonal, which means perpendicular, it doesn't matter. Here's one vector, that's the gradient vector, okay? Whatever it is. And in order for you to be orthogonal, it doesn't matter if you're going in that direction or you're going in this direction. You still have that 90 degree angle, okay? But I'm gonna pick the first one. So if I wanna find, um, d u of f of 7, 1, I'm going to take that um, gradient, which was negative 1 third, negative 1 fifth. And I'm going to dot product it with what I just got, which was uh, 3 over the square root of 34 comma negative 5 over the square root of 34. And so what do I get? When I multiply these, I'm going to get negative 3 over 3 square root of 34 plus um, positive 5 over 5 square root of 34, which is negative 1 over the square root of 34 plus 1 over the square root of 34. And for some reason, I get 0. I mean, that's just what I got. So we'll see if this is correct. So for you, I used 3 over the square root of 34, comma, oh, no, comma doesn't belong there, comma, fraction negative five over the square root of 34. And when I took the directional derivative, I got the number zero. I'm nervous about this one, but we'll see. Ooh, how we did. Oh yeah, we got two free checks. Okay, cool. Now number 10, we have f of x, y equal to eight minus four x minus nine y. And we have C equal to eight and we have P equal to zero, zero. And it says, find the normal vector to the level curve F of X equals C, okay? So in order for me to do that, I am gonna have to find the gradient. So we're gonna need our gradient of F. Um, and in this case, it's going to be negative four comma negative nine. And then I'm going to have to take that gradient of f at the point zero, 0, But there's no x's and y's to plug it into. So it's just going to stay negative 4, negative 9. Okay. And if my level curve is at c equal to 8, then this is going to become um, 8 minus 4x minus 9y equal to my level curve 8. By minus eight on both sides, I get negative four X minus nine Y equal to zero, okay? Um, and so let's see, I don't think they didn't even ask me for that. If this is just what the, you got, it's basically gonna be a line, right? Um, but let's go ahead and give them this value that they asked us for. So where's my mouse? There it is. It's going to be a vector and it's going to be negative four comma negative nine. Okay, so now we learned something that this value, we've always been taking the gradient and evaluating at a point. Um, but believe it or not, that that's the normal vector um, to that point, okay? So I think that's it. Um, I can submit. I think I already finished the whole assignment.
So I'm going to close this one out and hopefully this is enough um, computations that you've seen so that you can be successful in completing your assignment. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.